Welcome to the Payday with Ray Ray podcast, hosted by yours truly, Rachel Bell. I'm here to make your life easier as an entrepreneur and teach you everything I've learned about building multiple seven-figure online businesses. And on this podcast, I'll be giving you my best advice, trainings, and mindset shifts so you can grow your business and most importantly, make every day your payday. Yellow. <laughs> Hello. Actually, the only people I've ever heard say yellow when they answer the phone or something is it's always a dad, right? It's like 100% of the time it's a dad. If you have a you know, contradictory witness of this happening with any other type of person, let me know because I've only ever heard dad say yellow. Anyway, this podcast is not about dads and it's not about yellow. It's about hello. This is Payday with Ray Ray. And welcome back to another episode. In this one, I'm diving deep into Instagram stories just in a way that will be not as much demonstrative of the features because you can just whip open your phone, look up any tutorial and see how to add a filter. That's not something that is going to dramatically increase your bank account or your influence influence online. Really what it comes down to is your ability to use these features and use the tools at your fingertips to create the online presence that will best serve your ideal client avatar. So I'm going to be sharing some fundamental groundwork about how to use Instagram stories on a psychological level so that you are accomplishing what you set out to accomplish. You're not just wasting time taking pictures of your freaking oatmeal every day, hoping that one day, somehow, somewhere, someone's going to see it and be like, you know what? Why don't you just take my credit card information? <laughs> okay, so let's dive into uh, who's sponsoring this episode. Who do you think it is? First of all, if you've watched or listened to, it'd be interesting if you were watching to this episode, I would want to know how you're doing that. But if you've listened to this podcast before, I want to know if you know who is sponsoring this episode. If you're out of the loop, let me just tell you who it is. It is Online Coach University, as always. And if you're unfamiliar with Online Coach University and what we do in there, I will just tell you. Online Coach University is my online education company where I teach online coaches how to start, scale, and grow their businesses. And it is just absolutely my life's work and what I enjoy doing the most. And someone said to me the other day, Rachel, OCA and OCU, they're not your businesses, they're your obsession. And it's so true. Like this is so much more than a business to me because I remember when I first got started in the entrepreneurship world, I really, really wanted to be a coach. I had had a, a couple really, really transformative experiences experiences with coaches helping me. And I just couldn't think of anything better to do with my life than to try my best to support others and blaze a trail that maybe I could help other people improve their lives with. So I was just so passionate about the coaching industry and becoming a coach since the beginning when I was probably around 16 or 17 years old. That's when I first had my first introduction into fitness coaching or life coaching or spiritual coaching. And I was like, man, these people are helping me so much. I would love to one day be the type of person who can help others. And I'm sure that you've at some point in your journey come to the same conclusion with your life. If you're listening to this episode, you're like, hey, I really, really love helping and supporting other people and seeing the breakthrough and the transformation in other people's lives as well as my own. So why would I not try to do that for a living if it's truly what I love? So you are a coach, let's say, but it takes so much more than just being an amazing coach. I've learned that no matter how experienced or qualified or really badass you are as a coach, if you don't know how to communicate your value to other people, especially your potential clients, unfortunately, you can very rarely go full-time doing this whole thing about coaching. It's very difficult to go full-time, especially if you want to be online and have location freedom, if you don't know how to market yourself. So I learned throughout my journey that marketing and sales were going to be my ticket into doing whatever I wanted to do full-time, whether it was coaching or whether it was consulting or service providing or creating anything online, I needed to learn how to market it and sell it. And if you're listening to this podcast, chances are you've realized the exact same thing. So I'm proud of you for taking action and learning how to expand your skill sets. And I just wanted to let you know about Online Coach University and more specifically, one of our signature programs called the Online Coach Accelerator Program. If you've been following me on Instagram for any amount of time, you probably know that Online Coach Accelerator is my signature 90-day business mentorship program for online coaches. And inside of this program, the reason why it's so popular is because it's so damn effective for new coaches who want to learn how to go full-time online. We take you through a series of eight really, really in-depth video modules to teach you our methodology and how we help you select your niche 
package and position your offer, create amazing content that sells, and of course, learn how to facilitate sales conversations with ease, confidence, and authenticity. So if you want to learn all of those things for your online coaching business, Online Coach Accelerator can absolutely help you. And not only that, but I realized something that I've never shared on the podcast before is what we do to support our students outside of the video curriculum and the modules. So if you've been curious about, yeah, okay, Rachel, I get that I'm going to go through a course, but what else do you have for me inside of Online Coach Accelerator? Because I really need someone to have hands-on experience in my business with me, telling me whether or not something I'm about to do is a good idea or a bad idea and giving me feedback on my homework and all that stuff. So let me tell you exactly how our support system works. We divide up OCA support into a couple different categories. One of them is Q&A calls. These are pretty straightforward. If you have a question about your curriculum or you have a question about a client situation or how to close more sales or you have a question about your content and you want it reviewed and all the different pieces that you're going to be working on during the accelerator program, you can just hop on a weekly Q&A call and ask all the questions you want and you're guaranteed an answer on that Q&A call. So you have on-demand service at least once a week with our lead coach inside of Online Coach Accelerator, who is also a graduate and someone who has been able to create a six-figure business using this material. So they are the best types of people to help you with this information and give you quick answers on demand. In addition to that, we also have accountability systems because honestly, what will stop you more than anything else in your entire entrepreneurship journey is lack of follow through. And we all know that no matter how experienced or skilled you are as a coach, it doesn't matter because someone who's taking more action than you is going to be making the most progress. So if you want to make the maximum amount of progress in your business, you have to be accountable to yourself and following through and taking action. So we've developed a system to allow our students to be the most productive and intense action takers out there. And how it works is I divide you all up into teams of 10 students and I group you into teams manually because I want to make sure that you're connecting with the right people and that you're put into a team that really will serve your your journey best as an entrepreneur. And when you join OCA, I also have you fill out an in-depth intake form about your personality type, your history, even things about like where do you come from? What was your childhood like? Like, what are you most proud of yourself for? What have you most regretted in your life? All of those different types of questions so I can really get a pulse on who you are. And then based on that information, including where you're at in your business and what type of coach you are, I group you into teams of 10 people each. And when you're working with your team throughout this program, you're going to be getting on weekly accountability calls that are facilitated by an accountability coach that I've personally trained to facilitate these sessions. So they're going to be asking you, what did you get done this week? What didn't you get done this week? Why did that happen? And helping you with your productivity and your time management. So I have a lot of people who ask me, Rachel, I really want to join OCA, but I'm just so nervous about the time commitment because I just, I'm so spread thin already. How am I going to be able to commit to a program that requires a lot of my time? And my answer to that is don't even worry about it. We create OCA to fit into your schedule, not the other way around. And yes, we have a large amount of resources and calls and available support for you at all times. But really, you can just show up and ask whatever questions you have when you have them, and it can fit perfectly into your schedule. I've created this program specifically for busy people who have a life and want to go full time so that they can relax more, have more free time, travel, be location independent and work from home. So I know where you're at and time management is something that we really, really focus on during OCA. So you'll have those weekly accountability calls and the weekly Q&A calls. And not only that, but you'll also get unlimited text support, which means that you can write into our messaging app anytime that you can or you want, and you just post your homework or whatever question you have, tell us about a situation that's happening in your business, or you can ask a question about the modules, whatever you need as you move through your journey, we are there to answer it within 48 hours guaranteed, Monday through Saturday. So that is the most on-demand mentorship you could possibly ask for in this industry, and we really, really do everything we can to reinvest and research and optimize our support system so that all of the students are getting exactly what they need from the time that they enter to the time that they walk away from the program. 
So if you've been wondering what makes OCA different from other programs, it has to be our support. We do not slack on support. We absolutely do everything that we can to make sure that you get the customized and personalized information you need to make massive progress in your business. And if you'd like to see some case studies of what this program is able to produce in terms of results and revenue for online coaches, whether you're just starting out or you've been coaching for a while and you're looking to go fully online, check out my Instagram story highlights called results and you'll be able to see a lot of success stories and really, really heart-touching scenarios of people finally changing their lives and going full-time in their businesses. It's the most amazing and fulfilling work I could imagine doing. And I'm so excited to announce that we are opening up OCA for another round of enrollment in just a few days. February 1st, 2020 is when we are opening up our next cohort of students. So what that means is for the entire month, we are going to be doing discovery calls that are totally free. And on these calls, We're just going to interview you about your business, ask you some questions about where you're at, where you want to be, what your dream is, and whether or not OCA is going to be a good fit to help you get there. And if the answer is yes, and we'll talk about the investment and all those things of what it takes to get started and work together, but you have an amazing opportunity come February 1st to get on a phone call with us and talk about your business. And I promise you that if you do nothing else in 2020 to grow your business, this phone call will be incredibly clarifying and helpful for you to gain a lot of access to what's currently holding you back and what you really want to create in the future with your business. So When February 1st hits, I will open up enrollment, which means that we are accepting new students and then we'll mentor you for 90 days starting from March 10th. So February is your time to get involved and see if it's going to be a good fit for you. If you want to learn more, go to www.onlinecoachaccelerator.com. And from there, you'll be able to book a call and get started with us. Can't wait to see you inside. And now let's dive into the episode about Instagram stories. All right. So as I mentioned earlier in this episode, this type of training is not going to be focused on how to use the actual features like filters, text, and whatever, because that's just one quick Google search away. And I trust you be resourceful with how you're finding that information. But what I really wanted to give you is something that you can't find on Google, which is the psychology behind creating a really captivating online presence and getting your mind right when it comes to learning how to use Instagram stories, and more importantly, how to think about Instagram stories. Because there's a lot of confusion out there. You're like, how often should I post? What should I talk about? What's the best way to attract clients? What's the best way to increase my viewership? And it all comes down to a few really, really core principles. So I'm going to go over a little agenda of what we're going to cover. And this is a lot of information that I covered in my Instagram stories sales course as well. So if you are interested in that, go ahead and email in hello at paydaywithrayray.com. And we'll be able to get you the information you need in order to purchase that course if that's something you're interested in. Okay, so for the agenda for this podcast episode, I want to cover the mindset of Instagram stories and really what you need to be thinking about and what factors you need to take into consideration when creating your online presence and your personal brand. I want to cover a little bit about the features and how to turn each of these features into kind of a sales machine for yourself. Talk about some essential pieces you need to figure out about your personal brand. And of course, talk about the rules of the game, like how often to post, what stories are really there for, and how to use them to the best of your ability, and some core principles of success when it comes to sales in your Instagram stories. Okay, so we're going to cover a lot of ground here. Let's start off with the golden rule of the whole entire session, which is this. You are supposed to represent the fully actualized and embodied version of what your ideal client dreams of becoming. So this doesn't mean that you put on a show and you pretend to be some guru and that you're actually not. It just means that you need to be walking the talk and leading the example of what your ideal client avatar really needs in their life. Like everyone's looking for a leader to follow. That's why celebrities, influencers, teachers, educators, coaches, consultants will always be on the leading edge of educating people and helping people get to where they want to go in life. So in order to really gain the trust of people who are following you and the attention of people who are following you, you need to be a really great example of what you're trying to get your clients to. You need to be the end result, basically. And it's simple in concept, but a lot of you guys are not thinking about that exact principle when you go to create an Instagram story. And a lot of people will give each other shit about, oh, your Instagram is just a highlight reel. And you can have whatever opinion you have about that. A lot of people are like, oh, you should show your shitty days in order to, you know, be vulnerable and be real. 
And that's totally up to you. For me, I don't think about my life in terms of like, oh, how can I show the best parts of my life and hide the worst parts? I just show up saying, okay, what does my ideal client avatar need to hear today or need to see today in order to be inspired to take the next step in their journey? I don't show up to write in my diary. I don't show up to vent. I don't show up to use my audience for validation or anything like that. I don't care if they like me or they hate me. I'm just there to help. And I'm just there to help everyone have a good time and obviously educate to the best of my ability. So my mindset around social media in general, I think it's pretty healthy. It's pretty separated from my personal life, which means that I don't feel the need to wrap up my validation and my self-worth in what people think of me online because nobody knows me online. So that's what I'd say the golden rule is when it comes to creating an online personal brand. You really have to have a healthy understanding of who you are outside of your business and who you are outside of social media because you don't want to get wrapped up into watching other people's highlight reels and then comparing yourself and feeling shitty about your life because nothing online is actually real no matter how vulnerable, transparent, or real you try to be. It's just people are going to compare themselves to you. You're going to compare yourself to others the more you consume. So that's kind of another reason why I follow very few people, if any, on Instagram as well, because I'm just focused on getting on there and creating and showing up as the fully actualized and embodied version of what my ideal client avatar really, really wants to become. And that really keeps me on track to self-assess and ask myself, am I being a good example? Am I being a good leader? Am I walking my talk? And I find it to be a really, really interesting and helpful personal development exercise to show up in that way. So that's my golden rule. And that's one thing that I wanted to preface Because if you truly understand and implement that one core principle, your entire online presence and your brand and your content will change. So that also means that you need to commit to having an unshakable sense of self and learn how to express yourself really clearly and articulately and stop hiding your gifts and your expertise. A lot of you guys have amazing wealth of knowledge to share with the world, but you're like, eh, is this the right thing to say? And you're overthinking it and just staying quiet instead of expressing yourself on these platforms. So I want to help you overcome all of that in this episode. The first thing I want to understand and help you gain clarity on is really what your personal brand is because having clarity around what your natural gifts are and who you naturally are and what your strengths are and your weaknesses is going to help you so much in leaning into what already works for you. And no matter what you look at online, there's so many different types of brands out there. You could be someone like Logan Paul, who's you know, very, very out there and very, you know, expressive and has a lot of controversy around his brand because he's so extreme. And then you have other brands like Ellen DeGeneres, who are more family friendly and everyone loves her. And she's a very like welcoming, warm, authentic presence, uh, very funny, very inclusive. It's like you could really be whatever you want online and someone out there is going to resonate with you and really feel attracted to you. And On the opposite end of that spectrum, someone out there is also going to feel very repulsed and not attracted to you, no matter what brand you choose. So the key here is just to do something that feels really, really natural, expansive, and authentic to who you are. And so in order to find your personal brand, I won't go through it on this episode because we'd be talking about it for like an hour. And I want to make this kind of a quick and easy episode. But If you want to figure out what your personal brand is, just Google search the 12 brand archetypes and you'll be able to find a list of some of the most amazingly descriptive and in-depth explanations on what the main 12 archetypes are for branding. And you'll be able to just read it and kind of resonate with which one you are. And you could even be a combination of two of them as well. Uh, For me, Personally, I'm a combination of the magician archetype or the sage archetype, I think is the other name for it, and the entertainer archetype. So I have a mixture of like really, really fun stuff and a mixture of really deep and intellectual things as well, or at least I try to. And that is my personal brand and the combination that I have. So as a personal brand, you need to have an understanding of what makes influencers and people who are really influential online captivating to a really loyal audience. Having clarity around your personal brand allows you to see how you can bridge the gap between people really wanting a leader and needing someone to look up to and looking for entertainment and value in those places and how you can show up to match that and really attract their attention and their loyalty. But you also need to have the focus and the ruthless alignment of an entrepreneur to stay in highest service to one thing and one thing only. And that is going to be your ideal clients. If you'll notice, there's a very, very distinct difference between people who behave as influencers online and people who behave as online 
entrepreneurs. It's a very different presence. A lot of times influencers are creating amazing content. They're creating amazing communities, but they're not really selling their own service or their own business um, until they step into the entrepreneurship category. And entrepreneurs on Instagram, I think we've all seen them before. Maybe you're one of them. <laughs> they, they just want to talk about their offer, but like their, their online presence is pretty boring. There's nothing really to get involved with. It's just kind of technical. It's very boring. It's very bland. It's very black and white. And uh, it's like selling a product online. You're like, this is my product. These are the features. These are the benefits. Buy it now. And without the community aspect and the creation aspect and the you know, personal brand aspect of being an influencer, entrepreneurs will struggle on Instagram. So my theory is creating the perfect blend and the hybrid of being an influencer and an entrepreneur. And just to further distinguish the differences between these two categories of online presences, I want to break down what I think influencers are mainly on Instagram to do and then entrepreneurs as well. So influencers are there to create content, they share their personal lives, they share their hobbies, their habits, their purchases, and they create content based on what they feel like sharing. And audience growth is really the main focus here and just sales is a byproduct of that. So their whole goal on Instagram and on social media is to go really wide with their audience instead of deep. You'll find very few influencers who you know, aren't selling their own signature product or service who have a very niched down audience. A lot of them, you know, service and have a community of a very diverse group of people. And uh, it's a very wide audience reach instead of a deep audience reach. Entrepreneurs, on the other hand, create content to share value, heal pain points, and create compelling future visions for their audience. And they create content based on what the ideal client needs to hear, not what they want to share. And sales is really the main focus of this, and audience growth is just a byproduct of that. So on the other hand, instead of going wide, they go deep instead of wide. I think that it's the best combination ever to learn how to utilize the strengths and the weaknesses of each of these different categories to create your own hybrid presence of an influencer and an entrepreneur. The first thing that I want to emphasize, though, is if you're in the beginning of your business and you're trying to get clients through social media, you need to be focused on one number and one number only, and it is not your follower amount. It is your bank account. And I think that the best way, in fact, I know the best way to get started on social media is to focus on making sales first to validate what you have. Is something that you're selling actually what people want? Are they happy with it? Are you able to deliver it in a high quality way? If the answer to those things are yes, then of course you can move into audience distribution and growth. But I think it's a total waste of time to focus on audience growth and distribution before you even have what you want to be selling planned out and ready to go. And of course, understanding who in your audience actually matters and who's going to translate to a sale later on in life. Because if you have a bunch of audience members who are like, oh my gosh, you're great. That's good for the ego. But vanity metrics are really, really manipulative way to trick yourself into thinking that you're doing well. (laughs) If you gain 500 followers in a day, you're like, oh my God, I'm I'm the best. But if you gain $500 in a day, your life is actually different. So that's something that I want to emphasize before we go any deeper into the strategy behind this. So let's go ahead and talk about how to leverage the Instagram features and what you have available to yourself to create the perfect balance and blend of influencership and entrepreneurship. So to go over the features of Instagram, like I said, I'm not going to be showing you how to add filters and text to your images or whatever, like stuff like that. I'm going to teach you the overview of how to think about Instagram when it comes to these features. So let's go ahead and get started. So when it comes to the features of Instagram and what you have available at your fingertips, the first thing you absolutely need to know and accept is that these features and how Instagram works and operates is always going to change like the wind. If you look at just over the past few years alone, Instagram has made such dramatic updates to the user interface, user experience of the app, and they're going to continue to implement new features forever and ever and take away features and test new things. So I think that it's just ridiculous when people make a big deal. Oh my God, Instagram is going to remove likes. Oh my God, this is changing. Oh my God, this is changing. And they get scared about it. The truth is, if you're building your business on social media, you need to be able to roll with the punches and understand that the app updates and what's deleted and what's added is simply there for one purpose and one purpose only. And it is to increase 
the app's retention and usage. So the algorithm, the features, the interface, it's all designed for one thing, and that is to create habitual usage on the app. So it wants you to be successful. It wants you to be captivating. It wants you to keep people on the app as an influencer, as an entrepreneur, because without your participation and the participation of the community and the audience members, there is no app. And of course, everyone wants the same goal, which is for the app to be as successful and relevant as possible. So of course, they're going to continue to make updates to that. And if you can use learn to just be excited about those updates instead of scared, you'll be ahead of 99.9% of people on Instagram because everyone freaks out over the smallest change, especially when it comes to affecting their engagement and their follower count. And in my opinion, no matter what changes in the in the algorithm in that regard, if you know the basics of how to show up as an online presence and as a personal brand, you'll be fine no matter what features change appear or disappear. So that's the first thing. I want you guys to be confident about showing up on social media, not scared. (laughs) Scared money don't make no money. Okay, so when it comes to other features, I want to also remind you that Instagram stories are meant to be exactly that. They're meant to be your story. So you may be showing up on Instagram like, oh, what should I talk about now? What should I talk about today? And it all comes down to this is your story. So make it cohesive, make it current, make it relevant. Let us follow you throughout your day. Show us how you're walking the talk. Show us how you are the example. And when it comes to also separating your feed posts versus your story posts, I would keep that in mind as well. Like your Instagram stories are meant to be current, relevant, time sensitive, and your feed is really more meant to be an evergreen place for people to binge your content and read through all of your different philosophies, trainings, and things of that nature as well. Whatever you want people to see forever, post it on your feed. Whatever you want people to see in the moment that's relevant to them and that will help them in their actual day to day, post it on the story. It's really that simple. Another thing to think about in terms of the mindset of Instagram stories is that this is your own TV. Show. This is not just Instagram stories. This is your opportunity to create culture with your audience, create little segments to have fun and to engage people, create commercials for what you're selling, create collaborations with people, invite people onto your Instagram stories, do some cross pollination, some sharing. Do everything you can to make this your most successful TV show ever and have fun with it because this is really your opportunity to express yourself, to create a community and do all the things and you have complete control over it and it's free. You don't have to pay any money to be big on Instagram stories and to show up big in a way that provides value and entertainment. So go ahead and do that. And that's what I always think about when I'm posting, when I'm going through my own story and I'm like, okay, what's missing here? Do I need a little advertisement? Do I need um, some culture? Do I need some humor? What do I need here to really make this a cohesive and amazing show that someone would want to tune into every single day? So that might be some lifestyle stuff. It might be uh, sharing your personal life a little bit and it might be sharing your trainings, what you're currently learning, what you're currently teaching, all of those things and so much more. And of course, don't forget about the commercials. TV stations are able to stay afloat because companies will buy advertising space in their broadcasting things. (laughs) I don't know how it works on the back end, but I know that how entertainment and business intertwine is through advertising. And that is something that you absolutely need to learn how to master as well. So don't be shy about advertising and creating little commercials for what you're selling because that needs to be included in order for you to stay afloat and actually use this online presence to create a business. Another thing to keep in mind is that you are having the opportunity right now, the first time in human history, to be in someone's daily life without ever talking to them, without ever seeing them, without ever actually having face-to-face interaction. So it used to be in the past that you had to see everyone in person every single day in order to have top of mind awareness and really be part of someone's daily routine and their life. But now with Instagram stories, you have the opportunity to do that and to put yourself in someone's life every single day, which is a huge honor, a huge privilege. And I would just encourage you to be excited about that and really be intentional about what you really want to share repeatedly so that you have that top of mind awareness in someone's life because you already have the opportunity to with Instagram stories, but your job as an entertainer and as a creator is to make sure that your content is something that someone would want to put in their daily life, that they would really feel good about and that they would want to gain value from. So that covers kind of the mindset piece of Instagram stories, probably stuff that you can't Google you know, that's something to always keep in mind when you're showing up on Instagram stories. Now, when it comes to the rules of the game and how to show up big and make sure that your content creation efforts are maximized, I want to cover some core principles that you need to master and understand in order to run this game. And then we're going to finish up here with the Instagram stories episode. 
These core principles are going to be absolutely revolutionary for you if you take them seriously, okay? And I I will share information like this all the time, but this is really coming from a place of me deconstructing and analyzing how I've been able to make millions through Instagram stories in the past 12 months. And I have distilled it into these five core principles. So if you actually take the time to write these down, screenshot it, post it on Instagram, show me that you're taking it seriously and you implement these things, your online presence is going to be so different one year from now than it is today in such a positive way too. So let's dive into the five core principles you need in order to run the game. All right, the first core principle, and by the way, one last note before we dive into this. I know I'm always prefacing and yeah, all doing all this stuff, but you need to know this is about Instagram stories, but it's also about all of social media in general. So I really want you to think wide when it comes to this information and think about how you can apply it to literally every part of your online presence and your life. So yes, that's what I wanted to share before I dive into the core principle. So principle number one is that whoever gives the most value wins. That's the end in the beginning of your story. Whoever gives the most value wins and whoever communicates it in the most compelling way is going to be the winner here. And when I talk about the winner, I really mean the person who's able to make the maximum amount of impact and income through doing what they love. So if you are constantly focused on providing the most value and you're thinking to yourself before you post anything, is this going to help in some way? Whether it's just brightening someone's day, whether it is actually giving utility on how to do something, whether it's shortening the path that someone needs to tread in order from getting from where they want to be and where they currently are, that's definitely something you need to keep in mind. Whoever gives the most value wins every single time. The second principle you need to absolutely understand, implement, and master is to post for your audience, not for yourself. So a lot of you may be waking up every day and, hmm, what's going on in my life today? What do I want to share? What's relevant to me right now? What am I currently going through that I want to share with my audience? And while that may be fun and that may be relevant to you, unless it matches up with what your audience and your ideal client avatar needs to see, you're kind of missing the mark there and you're becoming just saturated with a bunch of content that has nothing to do with what someone can actually learn and gain value from when it comes to tuning into your show. And remember, if you want the maximum amount of viewership and retention with your audience, you need to post for them, not for yourself. And this is just a decision that you make. Do I want to post on social media like it's my diary? that's totally okay, but I wouldn't expect that to directly translate into sales. If you want to gain the trust and the hard-earned money, energy, and time from the people who need your help, you need to be focused on them first and put their needs first when it comes to showing up online. The third core principle is that habitual consistency is non-negotiable. I get a lot of questions like, okay, um, I took a month off. I don't get it. Why did my engagement go down? I want to take this time off or I want to stop posting on Instagram stories for a little bit and test X, Y, Z. And while I'm in total support of you exploring and taking care of yourself and doing all of those things, I also think it's so important to realize that habitual consistency, when you're part of everyone's daily schedule, you need to show up and you need to make that commitment to post something out there each and every day that adds some sort of value. So what I like to do in order to protect my energy and also make sure that I'm showing up every day is I have folders on my phone full of different quotes, full of different content pieces that I've created in the past. I save it to my phone every time I create something really good so that I can repurpose it in the future, especially on the days where I feel like I need more self-care than really showing up on Instagram stories. So I'll show up on Instagram stories with live content and trainings, maybe three to four times a week during my workday. But when it comes to the weekends and stuff like that, I'm just documenting some of my personal life, showing you know what I'm able to accomplish, who I'm hanging out with, different personal development stuff that I think is relevant to my audience at that time. And that's really effortless for me. When it comes to the mini trainings and the business content and things like that, I make sure that I prepare ahead of time so that I can show up consistently in that regard as well, not just with my personal life and things that are fun to post. So habitual consistency is non-negotiable. Make sure that you're batching content and keeping yourself prepared when it comes to that. The fourth principle is like we already covered I want to just emphasize this again. And if you guys ever hear me repeating myself, it's for a reason. I'm just emphasizing the points that I've absolutely noticed to be the core differentiating factor between people who are massively successful and people who are still struggling out there on social media. The fourth principle is that you are the example. So show up as such. You need to make a deep commitment to yourself that you are going to walk the talk. You're going to be the example. You're going to live in integrity, whether the camera is on or it's off. I think that it's so important that if you are 
showing that you're walking the talk, that you're being the full example in your daily personal life as well as online. Because the more that you practice being who you want to be offline, the more easy it is to show up that way online because it's just authentic. It's just natural. So I would really use this as an opportunity to decide on who your higher self is. Like what's the most unstoppable, expanded, confident, amazing version of you and practice showing up as her or him in everyday life. This will just bleed into your online presence and make you so much more magnetic and attractive because you're actually being who you say you are. That is absolutely a key here. And then the fifth principle, if you understand this, you will have the key to life. People do not care about what you say. They care about how you make them feel. So this means that You need to just, instead of spitting out a bunch of tactics and trainings with no personality and no humor, no nothing, that's great, but you're also not a college textbook, so stop acting like it. You really need to make sure that you're infusing your content with emotion and personality and engagement because people care about people. People don't care about words or Instagram captions or products or services. They care about people and how they feel when they're interacting with that person. So if you really want people to care about what you're saying, you need to first care about how they feel about you and infuse your content with as much emotion and actual deep connection as possible. When it comes to sales overall, when it comes to Instagram stories and selling, it's really not a convincing game. People are going to buy from you or they're not, but the distinguishing factor and the differentiating factor there is all always going to be how you make them feel and whether or not someone wants more of that in their life. So how I think about this when I'm showing up on Instagram stories is I think about, okay, where is my ideal client avatar in their journey? Are they struggling with procrastination? Are they struggling with perfectionism? Are they feeling lost? Are they feeling stuck? Or are they feeling on top of the world and they're curious about the next step? I really try to use my empathy to step into the shoes of whoever I'm trying to talk to and level with them and relate to them with stories from my personal life or with tools or with quotes and images and things that I think will meet them exactly where they're at. And you'll know you're doing a really, really good job at this when people start reflecting reflecting to you this statement. Wow, it feels like you're in my head or you always say exactly what I need to hear when I need to hear it. And if you're getting that type of feedback or something like, wow, I really needed to hear this today, then you're doing an excellent job. And if you're not quite there yet, that's okay. You just need to learn more about your ideal client avatar and get to know them so that you know them at one point better than they even know themselves. That's how you're going to be able to create content effortlessly every single time. So that is what I wanted to cover about Instagram stories today. It's a quick episode. And if you guys want me to go deeper into the strategy behind how I do my launches and my marketing calendar and how I structure everything out. I would love to do that in maybe the next episode or something. I'm also going to start interviewing some of my students from inside of Online Coach Accelerator so that you can see what they were able to implement and what their biggest breakthrough moments were in their business journey from going from zero to six figures in 90 days or a year. Um, It's been a very quick come up for a lot of my students. And so I'd love to help share their stories and document kind of like what were their major breaking points and breakthrough points in their journey. So let me know what you think. And if you want more of this type of content, Instagram me, DM me, and I'll create another episode going deeper into how I use Instagram stories in a marketing way when I'm actually posting during a launch. And if you want to take a close look at what I'm doing during this upcoming launch of OCA, I highly recommend that you do that. If you don't already follow me, my name is at Rachel Bell on Instagram, and I look forward to seeing you there. I'll see you in the next episode next Friday on next payday. Have an amazing weekend. Love you guys and talk soon. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did find it super valuable, you just want to share it with the world. Make sure you screenshot, post and tag me on Instagram so I can stock your profile and we can connect more. And to get notified on the next episode here on payday, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes so you never miss a beat. Get out there, secure the bag, and I will see you next payday.